happening in these hallowed halls. Right on the other side of this wall, actually. We're going to have Sensei going up against Walla. All right, so I'm fairly familiar with the Eon team as Mid Hudson isn't that far. That's like the beginning of upstate when you look at New York. Yeah, it's like, what, just right past Westchester, but like not like yeah. super far up, like past to like upstate, upstate New York. Yeah, it's like, it's the real beginning of upstate. But they have a very active scene there, and I know Wall is one of their more prominent members, repping Belmont for this particular tournament, and I know he's no slouch when it comes to putting in the pressure, especially against other projectile users. Yeah, and this is a matchup when you kind of look at it on paper, like, it's definitely not bad for Snake just because of how Holy Water uh, can function. Uh, it does uh, populate as a fire projectile, so, you know, Snake's grenades aren't going to be as potent on the screen. At the same time, though, uh, you are still Simon Belmont. You still float in the air like a rock. Um, and I just think if Sensei has like the right, you know, because of the the knockback and the angles that a lot of snakes like, uh, you know, set like ledge play setup set him, you know, I feel like I can get kind of hairy for Wallet. Those like highish to mid percents. So we'll see how that works out here. Yeah, as far as the matchup is concerned right now, check out Walla. Even though he's n he's not in the lead, he still has to play a uh, bait and punish game. Like he's forcing Sensei to move in on him with the projectiles. He's kiting with the whip and with his own projectiles. And even at that, he's not able to put that much pressure down with his projectiles. I feel like he should be moving it just a bit more. Try and put some pressure out. I know it's easier said than done against the likes of Snake, but. It's looking like an insurmountable lead right now as Sensei's Ooh. starting to come up on taking the second stop. Yeah, that's just kind of the uh, the rough part about, you know, any matchup where you're fighting against Snake is that you, you, you at some point, you're just going to start training with grenades and treading water, and it's just not fun for anybody, and sweet God, that uh, that sucks. <laughs> Unfortunately, right there for Walla, uh, just getting stage spiked by the Nikita and having a world of uh, damage and stocks to make up right now. Yeah, no, he's got a hell of a time to try and pick up this slack. 172 and counting on Snake. I feel like one aerial would do it, and in fact, one aerial does. Up there, going to clean up the stock, but that's still two whole stocks, and Sensei could pay this at any pace that he wants to. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, he's just going to have to, like, work a lot harder here in these situations, whereas I don't think Sensei's going to have to work as hard because, obviously, you know, he has a stock to play with. He can trade with his own grenades if it means, you know, uh, getting better stage position and as well putting uh, damage onto Simon. And that's a huge thing right there. Like, Sensei's uh, setup has been really, really solid so far. Um, he's just playing it, like, close to his chest. It's very traditional snake zoning. And he's not doing anything too crazy as far as close quarters combat is concerned. Because you don't really want to close in on it like they're the Belmonts. Yeah. Um, they, they do have some blind spots, obviously. If you're getting close on them, their frame date isn't great. So that's definitely where you want to capitalize on hitting them. But Snake just, fun to, like, functionally as a character, that's not, like, his MO. Like, he obviously wants to have room to set up on you. That's uh, an aspect of the matchup that I find very interesting, is that uh, the Belmas can kind of touch parts of the screen that other characters can't because of how much range they have. Uh, that hasn't been, like, a huge factor yet. That was an interesting exchange right there with the uh, the Holy Water uh, on S.H.I.E.L.D. He had some cute pressure, but Take Nara Sensei has been consistently floating around the stage using Cypher to stay too far above where the up air coverage from Walla is trying to get to. That was very dangerous. Uh, Walla down tilted right uh, on top of a C4 and definitely uh, could have died for that. But living to see another day, that air dodge, just not uh, quick enough to get the punish on that. So Walla's doing a good job hanging around right now, but Snake, also a character that is uh, you know, known for his durability. But there we go, the, the forward throw. The forward yeet getting the job done right there. That's the real get him out of the house. But yeah. now Walla's well got the difficult job ahead of himself. You do not belong in this world, Monster. Yeah, no. See ya. Done and done. That's the first player out for Eon. But next up, it looks like we're going to have Mr. Professor and Opana. Yes, sir. Right. So if you guys are curious at home how this format works, um, there's five players a team. Every player is assigned a, a, a seed. And those seeds are always destined to square off against each other. It's not like a traditional crew battle format. Everybody just gets a one and done. Um, so what we witnessed right there was the battle between the four. Uh, I believe was that the the four seeds. I believe Devin. Can anyone confirm? I have no clue. Okay, <laughs> there we go. But I I'm pretty guess. sure everybody. I think I'm almost positive those were, those guys were the four seed. Um, and now it cycles back to a five seed, and then it goes. Yeah, this, the, the seating arrangement is random for each round. Yeah. And then it just stays consistent throughout that round. Yeah, so your like, seed stays the same, but you, you know, you... Correct. You, you may not even get to play. I think, I don't know exactly how many games we're playing. I think it's a best of three, yeah. question mark? Yeah, it's like, yeah, best three. Best of five? I'm not totally yeah, sure. Yeah, best three of five. Okay. 
Because you could boil right. down to the last five players, regardless right. of what their seeding is. Sure, right. Or there could just be a wash early on. Sure, of course. Which... DNA looking like they're trying to surmount now. Yeah, so Mr. Professor, uh, one of the regulars around these parts, going up against Opana. Really going uh, hero in this. Yeah, nope. yeah so Opana, um, you know, formerly a Ganondorf main um, and a Joker main, but has since moved on to uh, having Munchie in his pocket. <laughs> with the and honestly, of what the a hero. move it is. I feel like in a crew battle format, like, best of one hero is phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, yeah. Can you imagine, like, the lead that Hero can surmount is its goofy, regardless of whatever the matchup spread is. Because regardless if there's a character that can actually beat out his tools, you still always have that X factor. And if he manages a stock lead consistently against Mr. Professor, he'll always have access to Kamikaze. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we'll see right here, Mr. Professor, ooh, missing his directional air dodge. Uh, but even despite all the resources, does not... Uh, you know, have the uh, the height to make it back to the stage right there. And Obano is just kind of able to set up for free. Uh, you see, you know, he was, uh, he did have an Accelerattle and I believe an Oomph uh, stacked up right there, but because Mr. Professor took so long to get back to the stage, it all was kind of null and void at that point. This is all that counts. Yeah, you know. Okay, able to, you know, get some work here on the edge. I do think Hero in disadvantage when he, uh, it's not anything super great to write home about. Like, obviously he can do that. Uh, but depending on the character lineup uh, for Mr. Professor, uh, he might be able to chase him a little better, especially with Ivysaur because of the you have to be conscious of Vine Whip and you know other stuff like that. Indeed. Even though Hero gets some cheeky, interesting options from menu select, for the most part, his landing options are pretty poor. So Ivysaur does a fantastic job of forcing Hero into a really bad juggle state, and even Charizard has really good tools for giving him hell. And that was a rough uh, draw right there for Opana because he didn't have, he was probably trying to roll for a zoom, and um, he also didn't have any MP left either. So that was kind of his only bet to be able to get back to the stage without, uh, you know, failing. And nonetheless, though, getting a good pull of RNG does Mr. Professor. Yeah, I mean, that's just the fate of the dice. Even though you get an increased chance of rolling oh. a zoom when you're off stage, it's only an increased chance. It's no certainties. Okay, so now uh, Mr. Professor has made up that lead nicely. Uh, Opana's been really uh, favoring that uh, level one up be at a shield. The whoosh for the folks at home. Yeah, he, it seems like with that particular platform layout for town, he's going for whoosh into up tilt, which I have to presume at this percentage would kill a character like Ivysaur. I would assume so, yeah. But the fact uh, that there's even like a setup like that at that height oh. is hilarious. <laughs> oh, dude, it's so funny. Up tilt is actually the DLC move. Like, if everything else about this character was, like, you know, just mediocre at best, everyone looked at that up to him and be like, you know what? It was pretty good. So despite all that, Opana is still able to come out on top right now, though, and now uh, the pain is on as that best of one hero like you were talking about. Okay. Oh. Opana oh. not even needing any cheeky things. It's just a matter of tech chasing and pressure in the air. And just like that, Squirtle got evaporated and that Mr. Professor falls. Yes. So evening things up nicely is team... Uh, Eon, so good stuff for to them right there. And again, a valley effort for Mr. Professor, but just coming up a little bit short. You know, I haven't seen the seeding for this tournament yet as far as teams that have to bout each other, but I really, really hope that Eon has to fight Team Aeon. <laughs> like, it just, just kind of has to happen. Because I think we're doing a Swiss format, so, you know, if both teams continue to win, they'll probably face each other, which, and Team Aeon, I believe, won the circuit yes. last season? So. Last, uh, last season, it was about between Aeon and, and Bears. And ba Bears, so that's oh. gonna, it's going to be fun, man. And Aeon consistently having one of the most stacked locals uh, in this neck of the country, in this neck of the woods, if not the country. We so. have, it's weird because we had to bring our B team for this one, because, uh, as you might know, Mr. E is in Tennessee for an event. Yes. And Suarez is in Texas for standoff. Yeah. So because of that, our point differentials moved around a fair bit. Um, because of that, PK Chris had moved on to our team, which a welcome addition, especially as he's been getting better placings. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And then our fifth, you know how mid-tier heroes are. He's been getting all right placings with Rosalina, but Demez is there to fill the spot. <laughs> we'll worry more about that later as Arch faces <laughs> off against Maverick Hunter. <laughs> wow, that's funny. Okay, this is going to be fun, Mav. Um, Qualifying for Team Eon, I believe this is the uh, the one seeds of both teams. Uh, Arch being one of the best players from the mid Hudson reason. The Palutena main true and true, uh, you know, from Smash 4. Maverick Hunter obviously also playing Mega Man. I think this matchup is kind of hard for Mega Man because I think Palutena is really good at hitting that like 40, those 45 degrees where like Mega Man can't 
necessarily cover with just like metal blade or, or like uh, bullets in place. And also having the added uh, you know benefit of having two moves that are invincible against a projectile user, uh, I think is going to be pretty huge here. Definitely agree with you on all parts. Traditionally, this has been a very difficult matchup for Mega Man, and even though the layout has changed slightly from Smash 4 here, it is just as difficult, if not more so, just placing out better tools in neutral for an ever-present reflector. But nonetheless, I feel like Maverick Hunter is one of the Mega Man in Tri-State who's able to handle the matchup really well. And I feel it's to the credit of tri all parts of Tri-State having talented Palutena players. Because even though Arch has been Palutena for one of the longest Palutenas existing in Tri-State, yeah. and an excellent first blood for that to showcase it, I feel like because there's so many others, you know the tools to utilize around her. Yeah, um, I think the big thing that Palutena had as a benefit in the last game is that just, just, just character ambiguity. like. How many times would you run into the Palutena in any aspect of the game? Like, this, she's kind of become this game's, like, you know, okay, everybody kind of has one of these characters. It's kind of like having a pocket cloud in Smash 4. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not to say, though, but still only exclusive to our neck of the woods. Sure, absolutely, yeah. If you go anywhere else, Palutena is <laughs> what she is in religion, a, a myth. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, I'm having a rough go at it uh, right here. As you can see, uh, the battle's being won from by Arch on the, on the, uh, the ledges right here. Palutena having a plethora of options uh, to, to, you know, to ledge trap you and edge guard you. Yeah, even though Mega Man has plenty of options to get off the ledge with, but with using Rush Quill without exhausting his jump, his directional air dodge being really good. Ooh. Like, it's still a matter of just getting ledge trap. You have oh to get back out to the stage eventually. And even though Maverick Hunter is keeping the battle even, there's nowhere else to land besides the base plot for Final Destination. So I feel like stage-wise, even though Maverick Hunter has plenty of lateral space to zone out Arch, once Arch does get control of the ledge, it's a really rough scene for Maverick Hunter. Yeah, I agree. But Maverick Hunter, even despite that SD, uh, is able to bring things back nicely. As I say that, though, Arch going right back to work here with these uh, these landing traps and the ledge traps. Gets the forwarder into the explosive flame. It's going to be good damage coming out uh, for Arch. Maverick Hunter just down tilting to get himself back out of harm's way. But still, Arch just right there. Mispositions for the trump to back air. Still continuing the ledge play, though. Yeah, like, even if he loses advantage shape for, like, you know, two or three seconds, he just immediately is able to swing and get it back. Again, mostly because of either that dash attack or that back air, just buying him the space that he needs. I'm just waiting for him to go for one of these F-tilts and get his brakes blown off, because that move has a lot of, it's not great, and it has a lot of cooldown on it. Yeah, but if it hits, that's slapping Mega Man. Oh, yeah. Even though Mega Man's a heavy boy at 138% on Final Destination, there's really not that much safe room to maneuver. There we go. The back air from Palutena. Sealing things out. So the number one seeds dueling it out right there. And uh, Arch coming out on top. So 2-1 in the favor of uh, Team Eon right here. All right. Well, this next, this next one's going to be a fun one. So we got Ace Attorney stepping up to the plate. Who, if, if I'm correct, that's Zelda, right? Yes. Y'all have too many of those in here. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Y'all can keep that. <laughs> I can't. And then I cannot dispute fact, unfortunately. We just kind of do. Like, man. Palutena is a character, man. She is, uh, she's not, not Palutena, Zelda. I, I just get my blonde haired uh, royalty <laughs> mixed up. Um, you know, lady, princess. <laughs> you know, whatever the, hell Rob, whatever the hell Robin is when she's blonde. I don't know. But regardless. Joe's so. silly, though. Yes. What a tag. Wolf first of all. First of all, great tag. Wolfmane, I believe. And Wolf's, we're seeing less and less of these days. Yeah, Wolf has kind of had a bit of a, a fall off. This character was very, you know, meta popular the first, like, I'd say six-ish months of the game. Like, you look at the, the buzz that surrounded Zachary when he first came to the States. Uh, and obviously, like, the, the buzz that the character had when, you know, he first came out. Since kind of, you know, the meta's kind of leveled out a bit, people are starting to understand, you know, uh, you know, the ways to play around this character, how to exploit a lot of his weaknesses uh, harder. And obviously, you know, we got two new characters, three characters added to the game, obviously. I don't know right, how right. that's really shifted his meta or not. But, you know, the character has definitely kind of, you know, been neutered slightly. Like, people figured out the ways around him. They figured that he slow, but he hits hard. But if you can play around that, just don't get hit or make him pay more for getting those lone hits in, he's all of a sudden not that big of a deal, or at least not as threatening. Yes. And so, I think this is a matchup in particular that's going to be able to highlight that, because Zelda, traditional to her tools, is a zoning character. She's going to want to kite around Wolf. She's going to want to try and keep him grounded, or at least misplace him. And Phantom is a phenomenal tool for that. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, like, 
kind of akin to how like Palutena would get in on Mega Man. I feel like Wolf uh, is definitely also kind of hits those blind spots really well on Zelda as well because of how quickly he climbs through the airs. Because Zelda's offense is all predicated around the knight. Like if you can generate the knight, you know whether it be by displacing it or just like you know being able to, to ledge trap with it, incorporate it in that aspect. Um, that's making or breaking your character. So, uh, but right now, Ace Attorney is also really good at playing around the night as well. So, you know, we shall see how things stack out for him here because uh, he kind of has to win if, uh, yeah, he's for, gotta, for Team DNA to keep themselves in it. He's got to keep him alive. However, I feel like he'll be able to do fine as long as he stays grounded or at least doesn't die off too early. One of the things about Zelda that a lot of people tend to forget is that she has a really strong out of shield game, especially if Phantom is positioned. So Ace Attorney is going to have a lot of options to be able to pressure Joe Silly as long as he's given that time. You've already mentioned that Wolf can just smother his opponents, and Zelda, of course, is one of those characters that just completely suffocates under the slightest bit of pressure. There you go. I love that confirm right there, by the way, like grabbing somebody uh, and then having them get hit by the knight. It's so. It just, it just gets me right here every time. Ooh, that was so smart. Again, positioning himself by the ledge of the up smash to know that, okay, you know, you don't want to get hit by this, so you're going to roll in. And then he got hit by the knight. So, again, uh, his set play, or Ace Attorney's set play, so good. That's why he's one of the best players that comes to this weekly. So. But Joe Shilly continuing to keep the pressure on right here, though, just coming up short on a couple of those, uh, you know, of those uh, juggling attempts. He's struggling to find the kill, which I find pretty interesting because Wolf has a lot in his kit that he's potential to kill. Although that blast from out deep might trivialize this edge guard, but no. Thor's Wind actually still managing to get his turning back up, chipping a little bit of damage before he moves the stock. Yeah, I feel like that could be a big factor in, those, in these later percents, like you said, just Wolf's ability. He kind of has to just go for a kill raw. He doesn't have any sort of a, a setup into anything that'll like dead him a kill unless you go for, without putting himself in harm with like a down throw wolf flash, but you know, we'll see how, how big of a factor that becomes later because Ace Attorney continuing to put the mix on right now. Like he's just getting in this free damage, but getting called out for jumps is super dangerous for Zelda. That's just free damage. Ooh. One thing I do want to bring out though is that Joe has been playing this entire matchup from the edge. Like he's not really looking to focus out center stage so much. And because of that, he's letting his attorney get a lot of free positioning, whether it's moving out from center stage or along the platforms. And I feel like Wolf could be doing a better job of controlling space. Yeah, he's definitely playing inside out. That could also just be matchup familiarity, as that uh, jumping gets punished nicely by the up air from Ace Attorney. And did you see how far back that pushed him? Like, that's such a huge, like, factor here, because that means Ace Attorney is not going to have to worry too much about getting off the ledge if he has a Phantom set up. But the up smash connects, though, so one stock away is Team Eon. We're moving on, Team DNA needing to win this game to advance uh, to a game five. Now the pressure might be on for Ace Attorney, but he's not really showing it in this play. He seems fairly calm and collected with how well he's zoning out Wolf. And Phantom so far has not really been stifled too much. Oh! <laughs> Jump saved, no claw. Really? Yeah, you know, I don't think I've ever seen that actually send upwards. It always send out to a really weird angle. Okay, but Joe Silly has just completely pulled a 180 on this right now. He okay. did the wolf thing. <laughs> Showed his claws, but Ace Attorney continuing to fight back. If that lightning kick uh, connected, that would have been huge. Oh. oh! You hate to see it happen. And the Smash Con judges will let him try it again. Yeah. <laughs> But I like the idea. Yeah, and we and we get and we get the most uh, we get the meanest uh, taunt in the game or the victory screen in the game where Wolf's like, "You're good, but I'm better." So, so good. Don't was... forget how good his Wolf his win quotes are because people don't like seeing him on the win screen. No, you're right. I actually like don't really pay. I haven't really paid close much attention to them, but they're really funny. My favorite one has to be like Ridley when he just like slyly turns around and like. Looks oh yeah, at the he's like eating the thing yeah. that's not there, and he's just like, "You want some?" <laughs> so good. My favorite, I, there's a lot that I like because they're so fun in this game. I feel like because of the dynamic camera angling, it, there's like a lot more character behind mm -hmm. them than in previous games. Oh yeah, I agree. But my f two favorites that are recent additions is Piranha Plant falling from the sky <laughs> and then Hero when he rushes up to the group oh, of yeah. slimes. <laughs> it was a 3-0, but it was close. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. Yeah, but anyway, hi guys. Welcome back to the circuit here. Uh, I guess they're still playing it out. That's right. Yeah, we're going into game five now. Wait. Wait I no. think they still play the score for the score because That's of right. the Swiss format. That is correct, yes. So the current score is 3-1, to one, and it's just a matter of seeing if it will be 4-1 in favor of Team Eon. 
or if we switch things over to a three. Yep, so it's going to be Ram versus Escape. Ram, uh, one of the hot... Oh, gosh. Damn, it's a freaking snake, Ditto. Oh, <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> Hold on now. <laughs> I knew Ram played snake. I'm just like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> Something's up here. All right, well, to be fair, Koopa, <laughs> this isn't a, uh, a Ditto that we get to see often. No, that's, that's very correct. Snakes are kind of like... Uh, I don't want to say, like, a dime a dozen. Like, it's, he's definitely a very popular character, but he's a very hard character to, to play. Like, without, like, he, there's just a lot of intricate things you have to know about this character. So, like, it's only, like, really good Snake players know how to play Snake. Like, right. But regardless, here, Ram, one of the hottest commodities in New Jersey in Escape, obviously. One of, uh, you know, a very good player for the Mid-Hudson region. So we'll see how things stack out here. Like, I have to believe that these are part of the higher seeds for their teams. I believe these are the three seeds. And that makes sense. Yes. So we shall see how you know, everything works out here. Again, like, Snake, I, I, you know, I want to see how comfortable these guys are uh, playing in a ditto like this. Because Ram kind of plays, like, very differently compared to other Snakes. Uh, he loves to jump in the air a lot. Like, he loves, like, throwing out aerials. Um, and, and Snake loves to anti-air. So it sort of fits into itself well, but playing into another... Uh, character's game plan is like the exact opposite of what Snake Ooh, wants to do. see ya. Before up till. Landing. Yeah, Which up till. We'll connect right there. So, escape. Going up first. And now uh, let's see uh, how Ram responds being on the back foot. He's just going to lay down. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you know, laying prone isn't the worst of ideas because not a lot of Snake's projectiles actually cover ground level. Yeah, unless he like throws a grenade from like deep. But, like, at that point, like... Or canceling the heater. At that point, just shield it, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it, and it seems like Ram has a, a fairly strong sense of counterplay for this, which is mostly stay low and slow, which I feel is working fine. He's just now taking damage onto his second stock. Meanwhile, yeah. still chipping away at Escape, who is trying to keep up the Great Wall, but... Yeah, I guess, like, you know, Escape's opting to, like... You see him, he's just opting to sit back, like, throwing Akitas and, like camp with projectiles, but because there's so much room between him and Ram, Ram just doesn't have to do anything other than just shield it. Like, it's, he's just putting himself in a good position to just react to what he's doing. The forward throw will set up for another edge guard, though. Even, <laughs> yeah, that's not coming down in time. As much as people love to build up Snake as being a much more abstract character in Smash than the rest of the cast, at the end of the day, he's still a Zoda. And, like, even though he has great boxing tools, his projectile game is what really sets him apart. And the fact that Escape is building more into trying to keep that distance and chip away while he has a lead is proving true that he has solid fundamentals for what the character does in the ultimate. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So right now, Ram's still on the back foot here uh, percent-wise, and we are in a Vietnam War trench <laughs> in Hoots right now. <laughs> I heard y'all like fireworks on Labor Day weekend. Well, you know, we got them right here for you. Finally, someone able to take stage advantage, though. So now Escape, suck on the legend. That C4 is just going to nick him. Oh, no. That could have been really bad, but. I feel like, like the super close range Nikita might have been a misinput, but who am I to judge? Ram is slowly yeah. starting to take things back. Nah, man, his brain's just way bigger than ours is. What are you talking about? It is, it is curvy. It is wrinkly. <laughs> No smooth brains allowed at this level of play. <laughs> Again, Escape just opting to sort these Nikitas. Whoa, okay. That was, uh... That looks like something out of a Final Destination movie, honestly. But. Yeah, this is just like a Rude Goldberg machine of pressure. <laughs> There's just uh, so much going on, and <laughs> this character is so heavy. It takes so much effort to really do anything to him. He's not even like a super heavy. He's just like obnoxious to kill. Yeah, he's, he's girthy. He's, he's got a lot of weight on him. You ever put on one of those like army suits before? I'm hoping not. You ever you ever carry around a missile <laughs> and a mortar every day from nine to five? All right. So once again, we're back at a stalemate here. Neither person wanted to give up stage positioning right now. Oh, good, there we go. It's a good time to learn the uh, the five Ds of Smash. <laughs> dive, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Something like that. And down smash. There we yes. go. Ooh. Speaking of, down smash oh. actually going to come in and win the set for him. That broke the cypher. That's crazy. All right, so it looks like Team uh, Eon will still be advancing at a 3-2 to two clip. So we'll see if that 3-2 to two matters as we advance further into the stress. And now there's just, there's oh, just a no. wave of degenerates. I see the bus made it in time. I hear, I hear Biddy. 